and miss it, unfortunately. He may give you the answer to your financial situation. He may have given you the answer to your financial situation, but because you're so consumed with the problem, you just missed it. He may have given you the answer about how to get well and stay well, but you just missed it because you were so consumed. I know, God, let me share something personal. And I only share these personal things as, as illustrations. But believe me, I'd rather not talk about me. Believe me. And, and not talk about my stuff. By nature, I'm very private. But these illustrations, I hope, will help you. God told us many, many, many moons ago to take care of ourselves, to change our diet, and so forth. He told us through different means and different different ways. And we obeyed him halfway. You ever obey God halfway? Since God loves us so much, he spoke louder. He spoke louder. And uh, because of some health issues that had to do strictly with diet and exercise and so forth, then we heard God. Amen? And made the necessary changes in our home, right? But see, the answer was there all the time. But we, we were just consumed with life, and we didn't hear it, we didn't see it. He revealed something because he loves us, and we didn't see it. He may have revealed something to you about your troubled relationship, about how to be delivered from, from, from things that are plaguing you. Sometimes God will speak to another person and say, Hey, you must, look, you have this right here. You, you have this, look. And we'll say to that person, Yeah, I, I know, I have it. Don't you realize what this is? If I had this, my situation would be changed. Well, that's you. you see. <laughs> that's how it goes, huh? I like that. So what is God revealing to you? In Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 through 23, let me read that to you. Ephesians 1. Are you happy that it's Memorial Day weekend? Yeah. Are you, are you honoring those who sacrificed and served for our freedom? Okay, good. You have the freedom now to turn to Ephesians chapter 1. You have the freedom to own a Bible. Isn't that good? You have the freedom to listen to what your pastor is saying right now. You have the freedom to stay awake. The freedom. Ephesians chapter 1. Are you there? Not yet? Come on. God doesn't take holidays. <laughs> Ephesians 1, look at verse 15. It's the Apostle Paul. And he prays this prayer for the Ephesian church. Ephesians 1.15. Paul says, for this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, that's my prayer about this church. That people hear about our faith and they hear about our love. Amen? Amen? We had an individual come this morning. He needed diapers for his little boy that was with him. And we got him diapers by the grace of God. Because he heard that that church cares. May more people hear about us. Amen. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking. I keep asking. I keep coming to the prayer meetings at 6 p.m. every first Wednesday of the month. I keep asking. I keep praying. I keep utilizing the back of the bulletin where it says things to pray for this week. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. And here it is. I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. 
That power is like the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in heavenly realms, far above all rule, authority, power, and dominion, and every title that can be given not only in this present age, but in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. But do you see the prayer? That the eyes of their heart would be enlightened, that God would reveal something to them, and then hopefully, after God reveals it, that they would see that this is the answer. This is the answer in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Okay. So, we're going to allow our first response to be to cry out to God. We're going to be open to see what He reveals, even if we don't understand it at the moment, even though it doesn't make sense to us at the moment, right? Amen. We're going to, by faith, throw it. Amen? And that's the next point. Throw in your faith. Just like Moses throwed in. Throw. <laughs> throw. No, I'm going to say throw it in. <laughs> Just like Moses threw that piece of wood that branch, that tree into the water and it became sweet. We have to toss our faith into situations. In other words, make sure uh, trusting God is factored. Factored in every situation. Amen? Every situation. We're, we're going through a lot, aren't we? Yes, we are. Going through a lot as individuals, as families, as churches as a state, as a nation, as a world. We're going through a lot. Faith must be factored in to these problems and these issues, or we will remain in them. The water will remain bitter if faith is not included. If faith in God is not included uh, when you're dealing with the bitter issues of life, then chances are things will not change. We are to live by faith, and that faith has been given to us by Jesus and he develops it in us or finishes it in us, right? Hebrews chapter 12 says that Jesus is the author and the finisher, finisher developer of our faith. Amen. But this faith development must be something we are exercising. In other words, we're supposed to use our faith on all the situations and issues that we are facing as an individual, as a church, as a state, as a nation, and as a world. Now, I can't change the world per se, right? I, I, wish, I wish the president would call me and, and ask me for some advice. Oh, I would love that. But uh, I haven't checked my messages today. There could be a message from him, but I'm not holding my breath. <laughs> but I can change my personal my personal experience, if I throw faith into the situation. Amen. If I throw faith into the situation. Amen? Amen? All throughout the Bible, I'm not going to give you scriptures. You can do your own study on faith. But faith must be active. It must be active when we pray. It must be active when we serve. It must be active when we live and move and have our being from day to day. Because we are to walk by faith. The next thing, receive. Oh, praise God. Receive Jehovah Rapha. Say Rapha. Rapha. That's R-A-P-H-A. -A. How many folks have heard me talk about Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals us, right? There are many names of God. This is one of them that he's revealed. We looked at, at Abraham and Isaac. Remember the, the name that, that was revealed to Abraham? Jehovah. What? Jireh. That's right. God's the provider. This is Jehovah Rapha. The Lord is the healer. The Lord who heals you. In verse 26, it is written. As human beings, folks, we are so fragile. Susceptible to sickness and disease. Because we live on a fallen, cursed planet. But that's not the end of the story. We can receive Jehovah Rapha. You know... You've received Jesus as your personal Savior, right? So, so now your, your soul is, is free from, from eternal damnation, right? You're saved. Say, I'm saved. saved. I believe we also have to accept Jesus as our healer. He is my healer. He is my physician. 
Just like you choose a primary care physician, 